how to be a better Back for Blood nightmare teammate. That's what we're gonna talk about in this video, and I'm gonna give you seven tenets to live by whilst playing Back for Blood at Nightmare difficulty that will make you a far better Nightmare teammate. Now, the reason I'm doing this now is I'm waiting for the Tunnels of Blood update, and I've been noticing a new influx of players. And so we've either got some new people or we've got some returning players who are dusting off their decks, perhaps farming some supply points. And I have to say, I'm seeing some of the old mistakes, the sort of mistakes that disappeared for a while, but they seem to be back in force. So I think now is the perfect time to just, you know, give a little advice on how to do better at this game at the toughest difficulty. Please note, I am not judging anyone here because I can tell you I have failed to live up to these tenets myself, some more than others. It's just these are the qualities I try to embody whilst I'm playing at Nightmare difficulty because I know that I am a better Nightmare player and a better Nightmare teammate when I do. Number one, fortitude. Don't quit. This is by far the most important piece of advice that I can give you. This should be a rule that you tattoo into your brain if you want to play Nightmare Difficulty. This game can be brutal at Nightmare Difficulty. It is going to punish you, it is going to test you, and at times it's going to feel like it's cheating just to make you miserable. You are going to have to steel yourself against it. You're gonna to have to pick yourself up after you get knocked down and you will get knocked down, but you have to get back up and you have to scream at the monitor and keep pushing. This is partly because that's how you get better. You train by just pushing yourself harder and harder. You go through the pain barrier and you become better but it's mostly because it's not always as hopeless as it first might seem. I cannot count the number of times I've seen someone in a hopeless situation where it's looked like there's no chance they'll be able to survive. They're all alone. It's just them. There's horde after horde. There's a boss. It's just a complete nightmare. And yet somehow, through sheer determination and skill, they manage to survive and find us and rescue us and we get back together and then go on to completely dominate the act. You might not think you've got the skill to do that, but it's more about the mentality. If you've just got that I will not give up mentality, you will develop the skills, you will push yourself. You can be that player. And don't be the guy that quits just because you died, yeah? Don't, don't be angry at your team because they didn't get to you in time to save you after you went down. These things happen. They may have been busy. They may have had to save themselves. This may not have been your fault. It could just be the game throwing a curveball at you. You just have to bear it. That's nightmare. And don't be the guy that quits when the team wipes and still has a continue left, especially on the first map. I've seen that a lot recently, and I think it's because we've had some return players coming back in preparation for the update. And I, I think the mentality is, well, if we've wiped on map one, we're never gonna make it to the end of the act. Wrong. You could not be more wrong. At recruit difficulty, that might have been true, but at nightmare difficulty, the toughest maps are the early ones. Partly because, you know, you don't understand the team dynamic if you're with random people, but also because you've got white weapons and very few cards. Those are the maps that usually test you the worst. And let's face it, each act has that map that when you first discovered it on <laughs> Nightmare, you thought, what is happening? I'm talking Pain Train, Handyman. Uh, burning Trails, those maps where the jump from Veteran to Nightmare was insane, right? Those are the maps that test you. If you can get through those with a team, even if you've had to use your continue, again, there's a good chance you've got a team who can now face everything. Don't quit. Number two, self-sufficient. 
Be able to handle everything the game is going to throw at you. Yes, everything. Don't be the player that thinks you've got one job and one job only and that everyone else has to handle all of the other jobs. Don't be the sniper that tells the team they will focus on the specials but that the rest of the team needs to keep the ridden off them because it just does not work like that in Nightmare. The, the ridden will pop out of a bush right next to you and start hitting you and it might take two seconds for the melee character to run over and kill that ridden for you and in two seconds at nightmare difficulty that will have taken a huge chunk of your health and you're not exactly going to be shooting anything while that's happening and the same is true for the melee character don't be sort of complaining that you can't take out hawkers because you're a melee character you should have something in your arsenal some weapon some tool some card that allows you to take those out because there are going to be moments when you have to. The same is true of the medic. You need to be ready to do absolutely everything. Kill all of the ridden, all of the specials, kill the ogre and rescue three of your friends because that's going to happen at some point. Now I know this goes against some people's instincts. A friend of mine actually described it as the MMORPG mentality and she's absolutely right. The thing is, is generally speaking, what you're talking about there are 24-man raids where you've got a lot of redundancy. You've got, a, you know, multiple tanks, multiple healers, and if one goes down, some can step in. But you're also talking about a game where usually what you're doing is pulling one thing at a time to you, and if it all goes badly, it's just game over. You can't have that mentality in Back for Blood. You're a very small squad, and every member of that squad needs to be able to take care of business, whatever that business is. Now, this doesn't mean you don't have some specialities. Your sniper is obviously going to be taking out a lot more of the hawkers. Your melee character will be dealing with the hordes more, and your medic will be doing more of the healing, totally. But at any instant, it might all go sideways and every single person needs to be ready to step up and do whatever is needed. Be self-sufficient. Number three, adaptability. There are actually a lot of different ways to play Back for Blood. Some people like to move very quickly, some people tend to move slower, some people like to fight hordes out in the open and stay mobile, some like to hunker down. There's a whole variety of ways you can approach more or less every situation and no one of them is the right way. You might prefer one way, but if the team you're with are not really going along with it, you probably have to adapt. If, if, there are, if there are three people who are all hunkering down and you just want to speed to the end, that's just not going to work. And you can shout at them, you can try and cajole them into trying, but if they don't have the deck, it's probably not going to work. Try to adapt your play style to what the consensus of the team seems to be doing. Also, be aware that plans can change. If, if you've decided you're going to fight a hag in a certain place, but someone accidentally um, triggers it, get ready to change your plan. Don't be sat there typing in chat, I thought we were fighting it here. Yet yeah, something changed. Get to where the hag is now with your flash or whatever and just get the job done. Be ready at a moment's notice to change what you had thought you were going to do. Number four, awareness. Try to know where your team is at all times and what they're doing. This is quite a tough one, actually. We do tend to get very tunnel vision, at least I do. If you're the one at the front, you're pushing forward, you're constantly looking for things coming out of the bushes at you, and it's very easy to suddenly lose track of your team and not realize you've left them behind because something happened to them. Or again, if you're the one at the back looking to make sure you're not being stalked by something and you suddenly realize, oh my God, my team have actually dropped already, wow. Constantly glance around, try to use your peripheral vision, just 
glance in a direction, make sure you know where the team are at all times, how they're moving, try to know where they're facing as well, and if they're firing, be very aware of the fact that there, there are line of fire issues in Nightmare because friendly fire is an issue. It's your responsibility to not jump in front of your teammate. It's also his responsibility to try to see if you're about to move into his line of fire. So don't spend, you know, half an hour in your scope uh, just looking for things in your scope ready to fire. Constantly come out and make sure that there aren't two teammates trying to get through the doorway that you're currently scoping from and they're now paranoid that you're going to shoot them in the head with a Barrett because <laughs> they want to get out of the room. Side note here, if you are looking around and one of your teammates has been split off from the rest, check what he's doing. Does he look like he's looting and slowly moving around? If so, ping your current location to give him a bit of a hurry up. But if he's diving around or backpedaling or jumping from object to object in a manic manner, there's a chance he's kiting something like a tall boy and could probably do with some help. Yeah? Of course, that neatly brings us on to number five. Communication. Be able to communicate with your team. Now, obviously, voice communication is probably the preferred method. It does allow you to very easily give a lot of details, explain plans, etc. But you should also use the ping and sometimes even the emote wheel. Uh, even if you've got voice comms, it is sometimes a lot easier to explain where something is if you just ping it. And there are times when, let's face it, in stressful situations, you get a bit tongue-tied. You know, you go, oh, we've got, we've got a, uh, um, um, uh, a crusher, a crusher is coming from the left, no, the right. You know, it happens. You, you get in those situations, just ping it. Ping it like a maniac. Don't be afraid to ping a thousand times if there is something you want your team to, um, to know. If, if an alarm gets set off and you want to go and hunker down somewhere, ping there. Ping, 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 ping. Usually what will happen is whoever pings first is picking the spot and everyone will run to it. Sometimes you might get two people trying to do it at the same time, but as long as one person's done it, that's enough. You don't need voice comms. In fact, I would actually recommend some of you who are fans of voice comms to join some random games and not use voice comms. Try communicating with the emote wheel, the pinging, and, and other ways. There are lots of other ways you can, you can sort of hint at what you want people to do. Just try doing that without voice comms. You actually get quite good at uh, telling people what you want, but you also get better at reading what they want if they don't have voice comms. And then when you go back, if you're playing with a regular team who do use voice comms, what you'll actually notice is sometimes the communication with voice comms is less efficient and you'll start using a mix. Number six, be a team player. Put the needs of the team above your own. Now, I debated long and hard with myself as to whether I should even include this one because let's face it, this is something that you should have uh, figured out by the time you get to Nightmare, but I'm still surprised at the number of people who will just, you know, they'll run up to a mod case and they'll stick a scope onto the deagle that they've used maybe three times in the last four maps, even though the sniper still doesn't have a scope. Now they could argue, well, I didn't know he didn't have a scope. Mm, that's what I'm talking about when I say be a team player. If you've got a sniper in your group, just ping any scopes you find so that he can come and have first choice of them. If you find a first aid kit or a bandage or you get a first aid cabinet, check everyone's health. Who should get it? Don't, don't say to yourself, oh, well, I've got some damage, I'm gonna use the bandage, if one of your teammates is on like three health. And again, it, it, this isn't just about being a nice person, it's in your best interests. If you've got a player on three and four health, 
he's, you know, one ridden hit away from going down, which is going to cause you a problem, or even dying, and then you're a man down. But also, he's moving slowly whilst he's on that hill. So he's slowing you down. So if you want to just be a complete selfish jerk about it, you are going to be better off if you look after your team, if you put them first. But, and I think this is probably more important, if you actually do that, the team will start doing it back to you. They will start thinking, oh, right, you're using a shotgun. I found uh, a distant battle mode, or I found bullet stumble. Bullet stumble on that shotgun. You're using attack. Yeah, you, you probably need this more than me. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to put it on my pistol. They will do the same back to you. It builds team cohesion. And that is very important. Because that feeling of camaraderie, that feeling of my team have got my back, will actually motivate you and everyone else to play better, to not quit, to be more aware of each other, to be willing to be adaptable. So be a team player. Promote that team spirit, and you know, you will just you will just find yourself enjoying the game more and ultimately doing a lot better. And last but not least, number seven, humility. Forgive, forget, and support your teammates, even the annoying ones. If somebody on your team makes a mistake, deal with the consequences of that mistake and then move on. Do not cause drama. Do not be a dick and call them a noob. And certainly don't do any of that whilst the consequences of the mistake are still ongoing. You know, like in the middle of a horde caused by someone triggering the birds. Don't be typing things. You should be dealing with the horde. Deal with it and move on. Don't pretend that you've never made a similar mistake because you have. Yes, you have. If you've never made a mistake in Back for Blood, you would not be watching a video like this. You would not be searching for videos on how to be a better player. You've made mistakes, so don't give other people grief for it. Maybe they're not as experienced as you. Maybe this is their first time at Nightmare. And if it is, don't be sort of going, oh, is this your first time at Nightmare? Oh my God. Don't make them feel bad. It does not help. All you're gonna do is make them feel resentful. You're gonna make them defensive. They're not gonna play better, they're going to play worse. Whereas if you just deal with it, don't worry about it, or if they apologize and you say something along the lines of, yeah, don't worry. No, no, you know, we've all done it, it happens. If you do that, this person will be grateful. This person will, will, will want to do better for the team. They will like you because you weren't a judgmental prick. And I know, sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes someone will make so many mistakes or such a daft mistake, you're left scratching your head and thinking, how did you make it to nightmare difficulty? But the, the simple fact of the matter is, is sometimes people just have a really bad day. They just do. It's just, maybe they're tired. I've had those days where I've set off three sets of birds in quick succession and thought, yeah, I'm really way too tired to be playing tonight. <laughs> and quit, right? It, ju it does happen. But being a dick about it isn't going to help. It really isn't. You can say, oh, it makes me feel better. Does it now? Does it? And try it. Next time someone totally screws up and goes, sorry about that, try saying, don't worry about it, mate. We've all been there. Let's just keep going and see if you feel better than if you'd been in a big screeching schoolyard brawl with them. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much it. Seven simple things. Don't quit. Be self-sufficient. Be adaptable. Be aware of your team be able to communicate with them, be a team player, and don't be a dick. And I could probably summarize all of those by saying something pithy like, be the player you would like to play with. Because if you think about it, all those seven things are things you would want your teammates to exhibit. 
You don't want your teammates to quit at the first sign of adversity. You don't want a teammate to be constantly needing babysitting on, on every little thing because he's decided he doesn't kill Ridden. You, you want the teammates to adapt to whatever the team's currently doing. You want them to be aware of where the rest of the team are. You want them to communicate with you and you want them to put the team's needs before their own. And let's face it, you don't want them to be a dick. So it's, it's the golden rule right there. Be the player that you would like to team up with because then other people will want to team up with you.